In our previous lesson, we tried to understand the importance of sorting as a computational problem. We have so many sorting algorithms designed over a period of time, mostly to improve upon the previously designed algorithms. Now we will study and analyze these algorithms one by one. And the first one that we want to talk about that we will be covering in this lesson is selection sort. Selection sort in my opinion is the simplest sorting algorithm and this is what one would do most intuitively. Okay, so let's get started. Let's think of a simple sorting scenario. Let's say we have a set of cards and we want to arrange these cards in increasing order of rank. One simple thing that we can do is initially we can keep all the cards in our left hand and then first we can select the minimum card out of these cards and move it to the right hand. Now once again from whatever card is left in the left hand we can select the minimum and move it to the right hand next two previous cards in the right hand and we can go on repeating this process. So at any stage during the process the left hand will be an unsorted set of cards and the right hand at any stage will be sorted set of cards. So after 3 and 4 6 will go to the right hand and finally 9 will go. So in the end right hand will be a sorted arrangement of cards. Cards will be sorted in increasing order of rank. Now let's say we want to write program to sort a list of integers given to us in the form of an array. Something like this. We have an array of 6 integers here. So we have indices from 0 to 5. Let's name this array A. To sort this list we can do something similar to what we were doing for our cards example. We can create another array of same size as A. So we have another array of size 6. Let's name this array B. Now we can start creating B as a sorted list by selecting the minimum from A at each step. There will be multiple passes on A. In the first pass, 1 will be the minimum. So 1 will go at 0th position in B. Now there should be a way to mark that 1 has already been selected. So it is not considered the second time. One way to do this can be we can replace the selected element by some very large integer that is guaranteed to be the maximum in the array at any step. Uh, we can choose this max to be something like the largest possible value in a 32-bit integer. And now we will scan A again for the second largest element that will go to the 1th index in B. That element will be 2. So 2 again will be replaced by max. And now the minimum is 3. And we will go on doing this until all the positions in B are filled. In the end, we can copy the content of B back to A. So A itself will become a sorted arrangement of its initial elements. This logic will work fine. But if you see, there is this extra memory requirement for this auxiliary array or this temporary array B that we are creating. And larger the size of A, larger is the extra memory requirement for creation of this temporary array B. So this is not an in-place sorting algorithm. An in-place algorithm, an in-place sorting algorithm takes constant amount of extra memory for sorting a collection. In this case, the amount of extra memory will be proportional to the size of the input array A. We can do something similar where we will select the minimum element at each step, but we will not have to use this extra array, this extra memory and the algorithm will be in place. I have drawn this unsorted list again. What we will do now is once again we will look for the minimum element in the array. So we will scan the whole array to find the minimum. The minimum in the array is 1. Now instead of filling up 1 at 0th position in another array B, what we can do is we can swap 1 with the element at 0th index because that's where 1 belongs. It belongs to 0th index. So 1 goes to the 0th index and 2 comes to index 3. Now we need to look for the next minimum and 1 need not be considered and if you see it's pretty easy now we can scan all the elements from 1 to 5 in order to find the second minimum. The minimum in the range 1 to 5 is 2 at index 3. Now 2 deserves to be at position 1 so what we can do is we can swap 2 with the element at position 1 which is 7. This is how things will look after swapping. So second minimum goes at second position which is index 1. 
and now we have to look for the next minimum in index range 2 to 5 so as you can see in each pass we are finding out the element that should go to a particular position and at any point during this whole process the array is divided into two parts some part of it is sorted so the cells in brown here are sorted with each pass we add one more cell to the sorted part and eventually the whole array will be sorted the minimum in the range uh, index 2 to 5 is 3 so 3 needs to go at position 2 so it needs to be swapped with 4 now we are sorted till position 2 and we will go on like this 5 is at its appropriate position it does not need to be swapped if we have n elements after n minus 1 passes we will have only one more cell left so that anyway will be at its appropriate position so, so finally our list is sorted this particular in place logic of selecting the minimum in each pass and putting it at its appropriate position is selection sort algorithm uh, let's now quickly write pseudo code for this algorithm we will write a function named selection sort that will take the array and the number of elements in the array as argument and the logic will go something like this we will run one loop with a variable i starting 0 all the way till n minus 1 and in each iteration of this loop we will set the element at ith position appropriately and so first we will put the minimum at 0th position then we will put the second minimum at 1th position and so on in fact we only need to run this loop till n minus 2 because once we are done with all i still n minus 2 n minus 1 the element at position n minus 1 will, 1 will anyway be appropriate at the correct position now inside this for loop we will have another variable that will store the index of the minimum element for ith element to find the minimum we will scan the array from i till n minus 1 so what we can do is initially we can say that ith element is the minimum element and then we can run a loop from i plus 1 till n minus 1 and while scanning if we find any j that is having an element which is lesser than the current minimum we will update this particular variable i min and when we will come out of this second for loop i min will have the index of the minimum element now we will have to swap it with element at ith index we will do so using a temporary variable and this is how our function will look like I'll quickly run this logic in a real C++ program I have written this function selection sort in the main method I have created an array of six elements this is the same array that we had picked up as example and then I'm calling the selection sort function passing the array and the number of elements and once I sort the array once I have sorted the array I'm printing the elements when I run my program this is the output so this seems to be working the time complexity of this algorithm will be big O of n square we can quickly see how the running time is the total running time of all the statements let's say this particular statement will take some constant time c1 to execute uh, let's say these statements will take at max c2 to execute I am assuming their running time together in the worst case and let's say these statements will take c3 time in the worst case this particular statement will be executed exactly n minus 1 times this will also be executed n minus 1 times this set of statements this set of three lines if we try to calculate how many times these two lines will be executed it will be n minus 1 for i equal 0 n minus 2 for i equal 1 n minus 3 plus i equal 2 and this will be an arithmetic progression we will go till 1 for i equal n minus 2 and this will only be equal to n into n minus 1 upon 2 so overall time taken will be something like this and if we will evaluate this this will be some polynomial like a n square plus b n plus c where a b and c will be some constants in terms of c1 c2 and c3 and whenever we have a time expression like this it belongs to the set big o of the highest order term in the polynomial so this particular polynomial belongs to the set big o of n square
If you do not know about Big O notation and time complexity analysis, uh, we have one complete series on time complexity analysis. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. Selection sort is a slow sorting algorithm. Big O of n square is not the best running time for a sorting algorithm. So this was selection sort algorithm and its time complexity analysis. We will discuss more sorting algorithms in the coming lessons. Thanks for watching.